uh, Pastor Bron to introduce herself, uh, but just let me give you, um, I guess, one of the reasons why I've invited her onto our uh, staff lunch. And again, we send this out to our team um, through the week. Um, I've invited Pastor Bron because she is, uh, in her own right, a um, strong, uh, high capacity um, leader that is um, creative uh, and also. Um, I guess what I love about uh, Pastor Bron is that she is just so um, so clear about where she's at in, in her uh, faith life and her belief uh, in the sense that she's really vulnerable. Like Bron, I just really appreciate how honest and vulnerable and uh, you know faithful you are, you know, um, with what you've been given and what you've been entrusted with. And the leadership role you've got is significant. Not only are you, you know, I'm, so, I'm sure you're supporting Pastor uh, does as he leads the state, but you lead the Northwest and um, New England region and also lead um, your church in Tamworth, plus your church has four other physical locations plus an online expression. So within your own right, you are carrying and leading um, quite significantly in our movement. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, about your family and what your, currently, what your role looks like at the moment as a leader. Um, you could rephrase all that you just said, Lucas, and just call me an oversharer. That's uh, <laughs> definitely part of um, my bio. Um, but uh, also, yeah, so um, I'm married to Daz, who I believe you heard from last week, uh, who is just an absolute champion of a man. And um, I, I call him a man of men. He just is, um, our friend Caleb Dwyer calls him stupidly secure because he's just so secure in who he is. And I think that actually... Um, you know, you might not see it because he's such a doer in temperament, but he is, it's, I think, arises out of a deep humility um, that he's just just completely secure with who he is, which then obviously helps me out because um, he then is able to champion me from that secure place and um, he, he really does. So wonderful husband, three children. Uh, we've just had our first leave um, and go to uni in Sydney, so two months, so that's a different season for us and then two other teenagers all hilarious. They are definitely the joy of my life. I personally love to laugh and Daz is quite intense. So um, God's gifted me with three children who just crack me up all the time, which is a blessing. And uh, yeah, and, and love, love the church, just love the local church. I remember hearing Beck preach um, in Scone uh, when it was opened and, and her, hearing her love of the local church and yeah, I just, that that's how I feel, how Beck articulated it. It's just like, yeah, it is the hope of the world. I do mm. sincerely believe that that it is um, God's plan um, to see the salvation of the world and 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 doesn't seem to have a plan B on it. So <laughs> I'm pumped to be part of it. Yeah, that's awesome. You uh, just mentioned there before how you love the fact that your husband, uh, Darren, is super secure in who he is, which allows you to do, you know, what all, um, it empowers you to do the things that God's called you to do, which is great. Um, so, you know, I said before, you lead uh, quite a significant work um, where you are. And I guess the first thing I wanted to, I guess, approach is the whole idea of um, women in leadership uh, in our movement of churches. Um, we do predominantly have churches led uh, by men. Um, and so it, it, in the secular world, in the workplace, in the marketplace, um, again, that that sh that change has started to take place where it's it's more common now to see um, women independently lead um, organisations or uh, teams um, without any kind of question. It's just commonplace. Um, however, it does seem as though in the church world, it's it's, it's a bit of a hot topic for some reason. Um, I'm I'm wondering if you might be able to speak to that, being a female leader yourself. Why why do you think it is? more of a hot topic in the Christian world than it is in uh, the marketplace? And is it, does it have anything to do with um, any biblical precedent or any biblical the, uh, theology? Yeah, definitely. It, the reason that it's still a hot topic in the church is because it's completely unbiblical and we're being heretics by even practising <laughs> it. And uh, the blessing of God has departed from the church. <laughs> um, you know, like... Honestly, some people would believe that. And so that's why it is still uh, a bit of an issue. Um, like, so biblically, I, I grew up in it, bi biblically is a weird way to start that sentence. I grew up in a church that biblically didn't believe in women in ministry. Uh, okay. They held such a high regard for scripture. I'm so grateful to the church that I grew up in. Um, and they really solidly, like they just took it as it, as it was, like sold the scripture 100%. And so, and I got my love 
of the word of God from that church. I'm forever grateful for it. But just on surface reading, uh, it would there are scriptures that would suggest that women shouldn't be in leadership. Mm. And so I'm I'm fully empathetic to anyone who holds that view and 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 don't see them in any way as the enemy or against what I want to do or anything like that. I, I know that they really love Jesus and they really love the word and, and they want to fulfill what it says. So um so I I, I get it completely. But and I know that there are some scriptures that would seem to say that women shouldn't be in leadership. I think that not only that, um, we've got uh, thousands of years of church history that also have um, women not in leadership or, or hierarchical structures that don't uh, have women a, a feature in them. And so it's really like it's, you know, our kids are taught at school about um, uh, when they're given education about Indigenous Australians and they're told um, like the obvious question that often comes up for them is, but we didn't do anything. Like that's what our kids would kind of say. And what they're currently being taught is, hang on, there's generational trauma that's happened here and, and we have to like listen to that and own that together. Mm. Now, I might be hitting on some controversial topics right now, but, right. I, <laughs> but I would say that, you know, there's, there's, there's generational mindset here. Uh, so it doesn't take just one generation or one positional statement or um, a bunch of egalitarian theology to just undo that in a moment. It's going to take a long time. And we've also got um, an enemy to the church of Jesus Christ who for him it would be brilliant to take out half the working population of that. Mm -hmm. And so that's constantly we've got all these dynamics at play. We've got generations of history. We've got um, a spiritual dynamic and, and then we also have um, just the inbuilt um, insecurities of individuals on both sides, one to actually rise up and take their place on the other side, um, you know, that, that quote that says that equality to those in privilege, it feels like um, discrimination, like mm. there's all that at play. And so we're, we're dealing with something that's much bigger. Now, um, I, I'm so grateful for the ACC. Obviously, I, like I said, the church I grew up in didn't believe in women in ministry my whole entire one wing of my family um, are in churches that they don't believe in women in ministry and yet all my female cousins on that side are absolute weapons and I'm like, ah, oh. mm. um, but, um, but you know, they, they're doing their thing and I know that God's working in the midst of it all and, and he'll, have, he'll do what he does. Um, so, yeah, there's all that. But I know that it's still like people would say, why do we still talk about it? Um, I still have people who fold their arms um, when I preach and, and I still have people yeah. who who they're not allowed to like their son is not allowed to come unless Daz is preaching or or a man's preaching, um, like the yeah. Well, I mean, I've got to commend you that uh, those families are still part of the life of your church, irrespective of the differing views. That's that's a testament to you know the your church, like that it can it can be big enough to you know uh, include people who don't believe the same thing. That's so good. Um, I'm not sure if we're doing as well. We've, we've had at least one person leave because they don't agree with that theology, possibly yeah. more. At least yeah, one I'm sure we have to. I'm sure we have to. At least one that told us. But, yeah. um, you know, that your, your position is obviously informed by, you know, a, a theological understanding, a, a biblical understanding. And when I have heard you preach before, when I've heard you um, in conversation, um, you, have a, you clearly have a passion for biblical literacy, for, for um, theology. You've done your own theological study. Um, you said before that some of that passion comes from your church history, that you grew up in a church that, you know, was just really honoured the Bible and really um, you know, held it in high regard. Um, and I, I mean, I love that and I love studying as well. But I don't know if you find this, but I find sometimes that, you know, deep study, like, um, you know, theological understanding um, is great, fun, like it's so good to learn and know um, all that great stuff about, you know, um, context and um you, you know, uh, biblical history and all that sort of stuff. But um, sometimes the question I get asked, I'm going to ask you this question is, you know, what's the point of just knowing more and just having that deep theological understanding? Is there any practical application to being so well versed in biblical understanding? And how can we apply like that deep theological understanding to our every day? And I guess, could you give us an example maybe where it's helped you? Mm. Yeah, well, um, I guess the first thing to say, um, it says somewhere in the Bible, that's um, a great theological <laughs> statement, <laughs> somewhere in the Bible, it says, um, knowledge puffs up, um, but love builds up. 
And so I think that 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 overarching thing always needs to be love, doesn't it? Like it love, we're a noisy gong or a clanging symbol without love. Mm. Unless there's love a- attached to this, then it is just knowledge and it will just puff up and will be proud and boring. Mm. Um, but if it's got love attached to it, then and, and there's a purpose behind it, if it's love that motivates us, then uh, that knowledge is put to good use. And this example would be a very good one of, you know, if I just took those isolated scriptures um, then I would I would go and and be a leader in the marketplace somewhere, thinking that I couldn't lead in church. But mm. because of historical context, because of um, being able to take scripture with scripture and go, well, okay, hang on, if if you know, just say that their daughters are prophesying, but women are meant to be kept silent in the church. Okay, that doesn't line up. Without deep study, you can't get there uh, to to places that we we need to be and to arrive at. Um, you know, enlightenment that we need to have. Mm. And you might say, oh, well, the Holy Spirit would work that out. But actually, and things can go unexamined for a very long time unless we really feel the need to go there. Mm. Um, and I just, I think that um, study, uh, you know, I'm very biased here, but the Word of God is an endless treasure. And the more that you pull out of it, the more that you, you get out of it, it just creates this filled up picture and, and that keeps on being fuller and fuller and fuller. Uh, it's just a matter of then how do I communicate that? Like, do I know my audience when I'm communicating that? Yeah, yeah. And to not be self-indulgent when I'm communicating because I can just get on a historical rant. I love history as well. And I'll tell you all about the sexual preferences of the first century Romans and everyone in the audience will be absolutely horrified. Um, I need to know what I'm actually trying to communicate to them and who they are. Uh, and, and you know, it's that most times it's not an academic sphere. Uh, they just want to know how to go and live this on Monday. And so that's where I'm trying to um, get them to. But I believe that that the fullness, like you can bring out these little nuggets that, that some people will miss, some people will take. And, uh, and yeah, I just, I'm all for it. Mm. I'm all about it. Yeah, that's great. So, you know, uh, I guess what I'm hearing you say is that that deeper understanding and the work that you do to, um, you know, to, to fill your own, you know, world in, in your own heart and your own understanding with the things of God, um, then just helps to make you a better communicator, a, a more engaging and compelling speaker, uh, someone who holds a conversation well and still inspires and encourages people. You don't have to tell them, you know, every single, you know, biblical reference, academic reference, you know, the, you know, essay that you uh, read or wrote. But you just it just comes out. It just and I think that's what I've appreciated about you too. Like when we have conversations, um, you know, Daz and I and you and uh, Rach together, it's like yeah, obviously Bron's well versed in this kind of topic. She's done the work, and I think that also comes across too. Without having to unpack everything, it just comes out. It's like okay, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if your heart's full of that, you know, what comes out is okay. This person knows what they're talking about, which builds confidence. Like I'm, you know, what I mean, and that's why I want to ask you questions like women in leadership and you know positions you know theological positions and the next question i want to ask you i'm not sure how much theology informs um, your approach to this particular topic um, but i have heard you talk about it before which is why i want to um, hear your thoughts on it for our team is uh social media uh i've seen you kind of jump in and out of social media over the years like sometimes you've been like heavily invested in social media and it's like bronze it everywhere all the time on every <laughs> single um platform that i open and then it's like oh where is bron is she okay i better get Rachel to give you a call because you, have you left the country or something um and i've done the same too and at the moment i'm having a bit of a break from um social media other than like work social media but this is what i and i've heard so much at the moment about this like it's, it's everywhere at the moment like is it good is it bad you know what what's should we be there should we be be there um does it play a role should it play a role in church life so my question is what what role do you think what's your personal thought um what role do you think social media should be playing in our personal lives if if any um or even as a leadership a tool because a lot of my pastor friends are like yeah you got to use it as a leader if you're not there you know you got to be where people are um or just in the church more broadly like wh- where do you see it fitting at all yeah, um, it's a great question, Luke. I, I, I probably don't have as firm a position on it as you've made me out to have. <laughs> um, I, and, you know, as an oversharing moment, um, because they come whenever they will, um, I think it just wasn't good for me personally. Uh, and um, if I'm going to be really honest and, you know, fortunately I'm not on social media because I can't lose half my following right now, <laughs> it's just because um, 
I was super judgmental. Like I really, as a thinker, I'm I, I'm I'm judgy, you know, by nature, unless I've got the Holy Spirit working at me. Um, but I also like I really truth is massively important to me. So if I've had a conversation with someone and they've been vulnerable as they tend to um, and told me about their life. And then I see them on social media and it's completely different. I just judge that person so hard. Yeah. And so I'm I, like, I, they don't need that from me. And I don't need the opportunity to do that. If I can't get on there and just celebrate everyone, um, you know, if I'm going to get on there and be like, oh, you reckon? Uh, I don't want to <laughs> be on there. I'm just like, uh, yeah, I, you know, the Bible says, um, don't judge lest you yourself be judged. I don't need any more opportunity to judge people that I'm already wrestling with. <laughs> and so I just needed to get off. And, and you know, Daz had gotten off for different reasons. Um, and so, uh, like, so then you become acutely aware. If you're not both sitting there scrolling, you really become aware of how much time you're spending scrolling. And, and, and you know, if, if someone's having a conversation with you and you're not really answering it, because we always experience it the other way around we never feel it from other people and I'm like oh man I'm on here a lot and honestly now it's been I think over well over a year just deleted accounts not just gone off just completely deleted accounts would have to start all over again if I got back on wow. um it would be it, it I don't know where I'd fit it in I have no idea where I'd find the time to do that I feel like life is full already uh the only thing I do miss is my kids I will actually um like Bella because she's hilarious um, and she's gone now and the kids all share memes with each other and um, through their social media chat. But, you know, Lockie, our teenage boy, he's just um, gotten off because of other reasons for him. And, um, and, wow. and so, yeah, we're like, I don't, I don't find that um, in terms of what you said about using it for leadership and having it in the space, I think if you can go for it and be the best voice in that space that you can and be so positive and impacting that you can, um, it's clearly not for me. And then also from a work perspective, like I'll keep an eye on the church account just to make sure it still reflects the way that Daz and I would talk, mm. um, but not not regularly. And I, I don't ever download the app um, or if I do, I quickly delete it. Mm. Um, but then from a, a, you know, just say I felt called to speak more broadly or something like that, um, I had to come to a place of, well, God will do that if he wants to. And if he doesn't, I love I love the chapel, so sweet. We're good. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and there's a, we've got a friend who is not active on social media at all. He literally can't give us a weekend because he's so booked up. So um, I, I look at that and go, well, clearly God is able to um, make happen whatever. He doesn't need my help to do that if there was something to be in that space. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. I think that's super encouraging. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's helpful for me too. It's a bit of a, a personal question uh, but I think it's helpful for everybody because it's so it's it's just ubiquitous everyone it's just everywhere and so I, I know you don't have a position on it but I think what you've kind of articulated there is kind of like a position on it I think and I think it's a healthy one um, but everyone has to kind of find their own place there too I totally get that like it's and I kind of I do agree with those pastors as much as and I'm still wrestling with what's right and what's wrong and how much should and shouldn't we be involved and but that whole idea maybe we should be using it as a leadership tool that could be true too but um, it can be dangerous and uh, and yeah like you said it was a personal thing. Yeah, I reckon like a great phrase for it is who influences who. Like we, we talk about this a lot um, with our kids and and also with the church, like in their workplace and their friendship groups and whatever else, who influences who. So, you know, we, we like to think that we can be in different environments and um, we'll be a light there and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you just have to constantly gauge where which way is the influence swinging. And, uh, and if I'm yeah. not being the influencer, if it's actually influencing me, then assessing if that's positive or negative. Mm. Um, and then that that makes it the decision really easy on how much I'm going to engage in this space. Yeah. No, that's helpful too. Actually, it's a really good tool, good lens to look at it through. So good. Uh, we have to wrap up, Bron, but <clears throat> I don't want to let you go without asking you one final question, which I ask everybody, is uh, your own personal leadership development or your own spiritual growth. I love hearing people telling me or um, sharing with me who they like to listen to, who they like to read, um, who they like to follow on social media. Uh, so that was the, <laughs> you know, not going to help us out there. Um, so, but can you tell us, like, do you got, have you got some great um, favourites that you love to read, go, um, you know, people you always go back to or some fresh stuff you've just discovered? What, what, where are you at the moment with that? Oh, um, not, well, so, okay, you know, the leaders of readers thing. I yep. find that I'm that brain dead by the end of the day. I read all day, you know, um, studying yep. the different things and looking into different 
models and whatever else and constantly mm. researching um, that I, I don't love to read at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but I do always try to learn. So I, I never want to be the loudest voice in a room. Like if I'm if I get to be in a room, I want to be a question asker and I want to hear from, and I, that, that's you guys have been such a great resource to be able to ask questions. You're doing it so well as a married couple. I love listening to you. I love hearing your experiences and learning. So for me, like leaders of readers is a, a common saying, but for me, I find it's more leaders of learners, like just mm. in every environment, just trying to pick up what you can. And I find that God will speak to me through the most random people just across my day, non-Christians, um, Christians, people that lots of people wouldn't welcome into their church have sometimes given me just a word in season. I just find that God has used them. Um, so the more, I, which is ironic that I'm now speaking a lot, but um, the more I shut up, the more I get to learn and the more I get to hear the more questions I ask and um, try to stay in that space of humility and um, yeah, learn from everyone that I can. So in answer to your question, um, I'm not a great podcast listener. I do sometimes listen to my own messages. I'm my own favourite preacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. That's so good. Sorry. But, yeah. Very good. No, that's good. That's great. Thank you for you all.